Hello everyone, myself Dr. Vijayata and today we are discussing human male reproductive system in detail. So, the topic is human male reproductive system. Students, we are going to discuss this topic under three headings. First, primary reproductive organ then second secondary or accessory reproductive organ and third external genitalia Students, primary reproductive organs are those organs which are participating in the process of reproduction directly. So, in case of a male, the testis is the primary reproductive organ. The testis is also called as male gonad. Now, second, that is secondary or the accessory reproductive organs. These are the organs which are assisting in the process of reproduction. It means they are indirectly participating in the process of reproduction. They are called as the secondary or the accessory reproductive organs. Then the external genitalia. This is a part of reproductive organ which is present external. So, we are going to detail the testes first. So student testes, these are oval in shape, these are present in pairs, they are soft and smooth in consistency, they are soft and smooth in consistency. They are pinkish in color. If we talk about the dim uh, dimension, they are around 4.5 cm long, around 3 cm wide and 3 cm in thickness. The very important point to remember about this, the development of the testes takes place in the abdomen and later they descend down into the scrotum. I am writing that to the development of testes takes place in abdomen and later descend down into scrotum. Student, this scrotum is the pouch of pigmented skin which is present extra abdominal. We are going to discuss this scrotum later. In some, in some child, either one or both the testes fails to descend down into the scrotum. That condition is called as cryptorchidism. This cryptorchidism is a disorder which is corrected by surgical intervention in the initial few months only. So this is all about the testes in general. Now, how these testes are suspended? So students, if this is a scrotum, the testes are present in it. These testes are suspended into the scrotum with the help of a cord and this cord is called as the spermatic cord. So I label it. This is the scrotum which is the pouch of pigmented skin. This is the testes and this is the cord that is called as the spermatic cord by which these testes are suspended into the scrotum. Students, I told you that the development of the testes takes place in the abdomen and then later it descends down into the scrotum. So the canal by which the testes 
descends from abdomen into the scrotum that canal is called as the inguinal canal Student, there is one more structure that is called as the gubernaculum. This gubernaculum is the fibromuscular band. I am writing a fibromuscular band here. This fibromuscular band, this stabilizes the testes into the scrotum. It means that it is a band which is securing the testes in its position. So this is all about the inguinal canal, spermatic cord and gubernaculum. Now we are going to see the longitudinal section of testes. It's LS of testes. As I already told you that it is oval in shape. So student, this testis is covered by three different layers. So I am drawing three different layers. This one is the second layer and the outermost third layer. Let's see the name of these three layers. The outermost layer is called as Tunica vaginalis. This tunica vaginalis is an incomplete peritoneal layer. It's an incomplete peritoneal layer. As I already told you that the development of the testis takes place in the abdomen. So this peritoneum, it comes from the abdomen only. Then inner to the tunica vaginalis, there is a tunica albuginea. This tunica albuginea is the collagenous connective tissue. Collagenous connective tissue. Inner to this tunica albuginea, there is a third layer that is called as tunica vascularis. This tunica vascularis is a highly vascular layer. So the name is tunica vascularis. So students, if we see from outside to inside, the tunica vaginalis is the outermost layer, tunica albuginea is in the middle and this third one is the tunica vascularis. Now, each compartment of the testi, each, sorry, each testis is divided into number of compartments that compartments are also called as the lobules. Okay, so these lobules are called as testicular lobules. In each testis there are about 115 to 200 testicular lobules. In each testicular lobules there are highly coiled structure. Around 1 to 4 highly coiled structure are present in each lobule. That highly coiled structure are called as seminiferous tubule. So this red color structure which I have drawn inside the lobule is the seminiferous tubule. So I label that also seminiferous tubule. Student, this seminiferous tubule is the exact location where the process of sperm production takes place. That is the spermatogenesis. Okay, so the process of spermatogenesis takes place into the seminiferous tubule. Now at one point, all the seminiferous tubule join and it makes a duct. That duct is called as the rete testis. So I am writing rete testis. Now, these rete testes opens into the another duct and that duct is called as vasa efferentia. So I will write vasa efferentia. Vasa efferentia. Now, this vasa efferentia, it opens into a very large, it opens into a very large duct. Uh, and highly coiled duct, very large, around 6 meter duct and this duct is called as the epididymis. Epididymis. So student, these are the structures in the LS of testis. So 
Now the next topic which we are going to discuss is the transverse section of a testes. Now the PS of testes. Students in the TS of testes, there is a tunica albuginea. This one is the tunica albuginea. Tunica albuginea. Now, these are the seminiferous tubules. I already told you that one to four seminiferous tubules are present in each testicular lobule. So, student, these are the seminiferous tubules. Now, inside the seminiferous tubule, there are germinal epithelial cells. These are the germinal epithelial cells. In between these germinal epithelial cells, the pyramid shaped cells are called as the nerve cell. So, let me label. These are the spermatozoa. So, this is the seminiferous tubule. Semini. Sorry. Yes, seminiferous tubule. Inside this seminiferous tubule, these cells are germinal epithelial cells. Students, these germinal epithelial cells are the mother cells. This germinal epithelial cells. They undergo a process of uh, multiplication, growth and maturation and uh, it will result into the formation of a spermatozoa. So, these are the spermatozoa. Now, these pyramidal shaped cells are called as the nerve cells. They are also called as Sertoli cells. They are also called as sustentacular cells. These cells provide nutrition to the growing spermatozoa. So see, you can see in the diagram all the spermatozoa, the head of the spermatozoa are connected with this nerve cells. So this all are the spermatozoa. I label spermatozoa also. Now, outside the seminiferous tubule, there are Another cells, these cells are called as the Leydig cells. Students, Leydig cells are also called as the interstitial cells. Interstitial cells. These cells secrete the male sex hormone that is called as the testosterone. So students, inside the testes we have seen that the process of sperm formation that is spermatogenesis also takes place and it also secretes the male sex hormone that is testosterone. That is the reason the testis is called as the primary sex organ as it is participating in the process of reproduction directly. Now we will see the structure of a scrotum. I already told you that the testes are present extra abdominal in a pigmented pouch of skin that is called as the scrotum. So let me write it for you. Scrotum. So scrotum, it is a pigmented pouch of skin. It's a pigmented pouch of skin. It is present extra abdominal. It is present extra abdominal. The wall of the scrotum is made up of datus muscle. It's D A R T O S. So the wall of the scrotum is made of a datus muscle. The scrotum is divided into two compartments with the help of a septum. So the septum divides it into 
two compartments that is right and the left compartment and each compartment encloses the testes each compartment encloses the testes now students uh this scrotum is called as a thermoregulator very important the scrotum is called as the thermoregulator students uh in this scrotum the temperature is less than 2 to 3 degree celsius less than body temperature the normal body temperature is 37 degree celsius and in the scrotum the temperature is around 34 degree celsius which is less than body temperature that is an ideal temperature for the sperm production for the process of spermatogenesis that's why the scrotum is also called as a thermoregulator so let me write this also it has temperature 2 to 3 degree celsius less than body temperature which is ideal for which is ideal for sperm production that is spermat to genesis so student this is all about the scrotum so we have already discussed the primary sex organ that is testes the longitudinal section of a testes transverse section of a testes and about the scrotum in the next video i will be telling about the secondary or the accessory uh, reproductive organs in which we are going to discuss the five different ducts and the three accessory glands Thank you so much dear students